love sharing with you how I sewed my kids these pencil cases. But before we get into that, let's see the bloopers. You can sew. I gotta see. Oh, keep your tongue to yourself. Maybe I should have used my zipper foot. <laughs> we need to be able to see. Broken needle. Did you empty everything out? Yeah. And I didn't take my own advice. Hi, crafty people. Today, Elijah, Isabel and I are here to share with you how I made them some pencil cases. My kids each got to pick the fabric that they would like for their pencil case to be. So, Elijah, what have you picked? I picked out of space. Out of space. And Izzy? Um, I picked unicorns with rainbows and stars and sparkles. Yes. It's got my name on here. You're right. It's got your initial, that's called. So, it's got Isabel's has a little letter I on it with some yellow embroidery and Elijah's has a red E on his. I shared a video last week about how you can embroider some letters like this. So, if you haven't seen that yet, you can go and watch that afterwards. I'll link it in the description box. But today's video is all about how I actually sewed them into pencil cases. These pencil cases are an excellent size because they do fit a full-sized ruler in them, just diagonally like this. Uh, and they are fully lined on the inside and I've used some interfacing to make them nice and stiff so that they hold their shape. So I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you today. And if you like this video while you're watching it, don't forget to press that like button and you can subscribe to see some of my other videos. But with all of that being said, let's, let's get, get making. making. My, my mum makes, makes pencil, pencil cases. cases. We're going to start by cutting out our pattern pieces. Last week, I shared a video about how I embroidered this letter E and the letter I on Isabel's pencil case, and I'm using that positioning of my embroidery as the starting point of how I'm going to pattern out each of my pieces. I want the embroidered letter to be in the bottom right corner of the pencil case, so I measured five centimeters away from the edge of my embroidery, and I drew a straight line there for the edge of the pencil case, and I did the same on the bottom, measuring five centimeters down from the embroidery and drawing a straight line there. I want each of my rectangles to measure 32 centimeters by 23 centimeters, or in inches, that's 13 by nine inches. For each pencil case, you need four of these rectangles exactly the same size, and we're also going to need two pieces of fusible interfacing, which we're going to use to stiffen the lining to give our pencil case a little bit more structure. The interfacing needs to be slightly smaller than the dimensions for your pencil case, so I cut mine at 30.5 centimeters by 21.5 centimeters, or in inches, that is 12 by 8.5 inches. Those dimensions are written down in the description box if you need them. This here is the front piece of my pencil case because it has the E on it. So I'm setting that aside because the fusible interfacing goes on the lining pieces. So I'm not putting it on the piece that has the embroidery on it. First, I'm going to take my iron and iron out my pattern piece to make sure that it is flat. Then I place my interfacing on top of my pattern piece and iron it there so that it heats up the interfacing so that it sticks onto my lining. You need to do the same on both of your lining pieces to add that extra bit of stiffness. And I have used firm iron-on interfacing for my pencil cases. So these here are the pieces we've got to work with for Isabel's pencil case. Here's her zip and the two main fabric pieces which are not interfaced and one of them has her letter I on them. So they're the main pieces. And then these two are the lining of the pencil case and they're the ones with our interfacing which remember we have moved it in a bit on each side so that it is not as big as the actual piece of fabric. So the next step that we're going to do is to attach our zip to the pieces of fabric. So this is what it looks like when that has been done. This is Elijah's pencil case here. So you can see that the zip is attached on the front like this and then the lining on the inside covers up any of your stitching from the zip. So all the stitching is in between the lining and the main piece. So it looks like this. So now I'll show you how we go about putting the zip in as I do it on Isabel's pencil case. I have my front of the pencil case here, the one with the eye on it, and I'm going to place that so that it is face up. And I've got my zip here, and I'm going to open it just slightly like this, about halfway. And I'm going to place that so that it is the right side of the zip down. Also keeping in mind that you want to have it centered. So uh, I've got like a centimeter from this metal bit at the bottom here, about a centimeter from the edge, and about a centimeter from this edge of the zip to the edge of the fabric. And then I will take my lining piece like this and I'm going to place it face down so that it is on top of both of those layers. So with our zip sandwiched between our main fabric piece and our lining piece, we're going to pin all the way along that top row there and we're going to sew it on our sewing machine using a straight stitch. I'm sewing a half of a centimeter away from the edge of my fabric so that I'm not sewing too close to the zipper teeth. 
As you're sewing down, you will reach the point where the zipper slider is and you don't want to keep sewing over that because you don't want to hit the metal and you don't want to also cause a bump as you go over that part. So you need to put your needle in and move that zipper slider out of the way uh, back over where you have already sewn and then continue sewing along the rest of that row. I just use my regular sewing machine foot, although it may have been easier if I did use my zipper foot. So it's up to you what you choose to do there. Once you move the zipper slider out of the way, you can continue sewing down the rest of that row so that you've attached your zip on one side. This is what it looks like with the zip attached. And next we're going to run a row of top stitching along here to keep the lining down and also to create a nice crisp edge along the zip. To sew the top stitch, you just need to run a straight line all the way down here about half a centimetre away from where we've joined the fabric together. We're going to do the same process to attach the other side of our fabric onto our zip. So I'm starting with my back piece of my fabric facing up, putting my zip face down on top of that, and then placing my lining piece face down on top of those layers as well, pinning along here, and again, sewing a straight stitch along that line. The same as we did for the first side, remember to move your zipper slider out of the way before sewing down the rest of this side. And then once that's sewn, we're also going to put a top stitch on this side as well. Now that our zip is attached here in the middle of our uh, fabric like this, we're going to join the front pieces to each other and the lining pieces to each other. I'll take the front and back like this and place them right sides together and the same with our two lining pieces, the two with the interfacing should be right sides together on this side as well. One thing to note is you don't want your zip to be crooked like this when you sew it together. So when we're folding our front fabrics over each other, I'm going to fold the zip in half first and then fold the front fabrics, front, front, front fabrics. I'm going to keep that in there over it like this and just put a pin there so that the zip is folded in half neatly. I'm going to open it up halfway so that the zip isn't in the way when we're sewing around it. So again, I'm going to put this side of the zip as well on top of each other and then fold the fabric over. Let's pin around it and I'll show you how we're going to stitch it together. I am using clips instead of pins because I find it works a bit better on the interfacing. Sometimes it's hard to get pins through the thick interfacing, but you are welcome to use pins if you don't have clips, or you could use hair clips or paper clips if you do want to clip it and you don't have any of these little wonder clips. I have the front and back of the pencil case pinned together on this side and the two lining pieces pinned together on this side. When I sew around this, I need to leave a gap on the lining side so that I can turn the whole pencil case out the right way when I finish stitching. And I've also left the zip open so that I can turn this side through the zip to then get through the hole. The other thing to note is that because this interfacing makes the lining a bit thicker, we want to sew it slightly smaller with like a larger seam allowance than we're sewing the front. That way the bigger seam allowance will make the pencil case lining smaller so it will fit more neatly into the main part of our pencil case. To do that on my machine I have this um, nudge feature where you can press this one here and it will nudge your needle over. So when I'm sewing the lining side I'll nudge it a little bit further into the pencil case with a bigger seam allowance as I'm sewing around the lining side and then when I get to the main side I'll nudge it back out again to one centimeter seam allowance on that side. If you don't have that feature on your sewing machine you could just manually uh, line it up with something else on your presser foot there or just guess a little bit further over so that your lining will fit more neatly inside the pencil case. If you're a beginner sewer and that seems a little bit confusing to you then don't worry about that just sew your one centimeter seam allowance around the whole thing and just do your best fitting the lining into the main part. The reason that we cut our interfacing to be smaller than our actual pattern piece is just to reduce the amount of bulk that's in the seams. As I'm sewing around the pencil case here, I am catching the edge of my interfacing as I'm sewing around, but I'm not having a whole lot of the interfacing into the seam allowance, which will make it bulky as I turn it out the right way. And also the same in the zip area where we top stitched it. We don't want too much of the interfacing there to make it bulky. Make sure you do remember to leave a gap in the lining piece so that you can turn your pencil case out the right way. So I've turned it out the right way and the front of the pencil case looks like this and obviously I need to push the lining down into it but first we're going to close over this hole. So I'm going to straighten out the edge of the lining piece here. I'm folding in the edges of the opening like this um, and I will pin along that edge. And we'll top stitch along this bottom edge of the lining so that we can close over that hole. Try your best to top stitch as close to the folded edge of your fabric as possible. 
The last thing you need to do is to push the interfaced lining side down into the main fabric piece and then we're going to give it a quick iron so that it's nice and neat and then your pencil case is ready to go. I'm going to put on screen here some of the other pencil cases I made that I gifted to some friends of ours and I'll also give you some close-ups of what these pencil cases look like. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as I shared with you how I made these pencil cases. If you have a go at making a pencil case like this, I would love to see a picture of it. You can tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie and you can follow me over there to see what I'm up to during the week. <laughs> Are you threatening me with this? <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> okay, dude, okay. Don't forget, if you haven't yet seen the video about how I did the embroidered letters, I'll link that in the description box. And I'd love for you to subscribe to see some of the videos I have coming up in the next few weeks as well. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, go get creative. I will see you later.